Hey, how are you? No, that's not how we're starting it. Oh. Louisa, I was doing a thing that I've been doing since I was a child. Uh, this is where I take myself behind the shed and beat myself mercilessly for the things that I have done. I say I've been doing it since I was a child because it's something I've been doing since I was a child. I am honest. That is why you love me. Eloisa, Um My first television appearance. I was four. I was four years old. I'm pretty sure. I was in the World Trade Center. Not the good one that no longer exists, never forget, but the one in Baltimore. And uh, a very great man that none of you know, named Captain Chesapeake, said to me, you and your class should be in commercial. He didn't say it. He's a, he was a famous guy. Famous people are inaccessible, you know. False scarcity. It's a part of econ uh, economics. That's how famous people do it. We don't have time to talk about that right now, Eloisa, and I know that you were smart enough to know. You know what I'm talking about when I, when I talk about that stuff. But anyway, Captain Chesapeake uh, was shooting commercials at the World Trade Center, and me and my class got to be in the commercial. It was delightful. <laughs> so, um, it was delightful. And, uh, oh God, I feel so much safer about the man in the yard next to me because he was surveying the yard and I was very afraid as to what he needed and whether or not it would end up hurting me. But it turns out he was just looking at it because he was going to mow it. He's the guy that mows the lawn. No longer need to be terrified of that man. I will be because you cannot tell me what to do. But I shouldn't be terrified of that guy. Uh, I was in the World Trade Center, not the good one, never forget, but the one that nobody knows exists, the one in Baltimore City. Believe! Baltimore, hon. Hey, you wanna go down the ocean sometime, Eloisa? Eloisa, we should go down the ocean. You and I, we should go down the ocean. We talked about going to them nude beaches in Europe, but I ain't swimming. We go to the nude beaches, because you know that what it'll do to my penis, it'll, um, it, it'll make me feel very inadequate. That one time I went swimming in November, it was in the Atlantic Ocean, but like my side, the stupid side of the Atlantic Ocean, not the fun side, like your side of the Atlantic Ocean. But uh, like I went swimming in it. I told you already, Eloisa, you gotta be tired of hearing my stories. Oh, you gotta be so tired of hearing my stories by now. Eloisa. I swam in the ocean and then my testicles didn't come out for a damn hour after I swam in the ocean. Holy crap. Anyway, I was on TV, the World Trade Center that nobody cares about, the one in Baltimore City. And, uh, and uh, my line was this. And also, part of the situation is that Again, we're, we were like a kindergarten class, I think, or maybe first grade. It might have been first grade. Either way, I was like four. But we all stood there looking terrified and doing our best to not pee. And we said, on camera, which everybody knows is a special terrifying thing, right? Uh, we said, on camera, our souls were captured on film saying, we're crew members, and we watch WBFF, Fox 45 in Baltimore. I don't even remember the call signs anymore. We watch Captain Chesapeake on WBFF, Fox, WNUV, TV 54. I really don't remember which channel it was even. I was fucking four. But, uh, I was on TV the first time. And I loved TV. TV is where that guy Alex was. 
that guy with the ultraviolence and went around fucking up the town. I saw Clockwork Orange around the same time. Watching Kubrick at four years old, I would not recommend it. I do not recommend that for anyone. It's not... I don't think that's healthy. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take a stance. Four-year-olds shouldn't watch a clockwork orange. You know what? If that's controversial, I don't care. I'm standing up for the fact that that's not usual and probably shouldn't be done. A four-year-old shouldn't watch that movie. It's a, it's a heavy, heavy film. Look at Roger Ebert's review. It's terrible. He hates it. He hates it. He thinks just on film-wise, but I kind of disagree with that, actually. I kind of like the film now that I can watch it without triggering emotional breakdowns. We had a film screening last night. The point of all of this rambling is that after that TV appearance when I was four years old, I took myself behind the shed. Because I said we're crew members, you know. But I was afraid. I was, I was terrified that the people who saw me on television saying that would know I wasn't a crew member. I had never been a crew member. I didn't participate in their stupid little club. I was a smart four-year-old child. I understood that it was just a thing so that they could send me other things. I didn't want them to send me things. I was comfortable with our relationship as it was. Captain Chesapeake was there, and if I wanted to look at Captain Chesapeake, there was a series, a combination of dials. There was a, there was a controller that was attached to a cord that went to a box, and if I turned the dial just the right way, Captain Chesapeake would be there to comfort me. But I wasn't interested in being in this little club. I didn't like that in-group, out-group bullshit. I was like, what? Crew members? I don't know. I get the point. I've got my own crew members now. But uh, I just, at the time, I wasn't interested in joining. And yet, when he asked, hey, will you go on television and tell people that you're a crew member? I was like, Captain Chesapeake, but that's a lot. This conversation is obviously, you know, on that. It's, I think you understand. Captain Chesapeake asked me, like, hey, tell everybody you're a crew member, man. It'll help me get famous. And I'm like, but I'm a four-year-old child, and that's a lie. But okay, I'll do it. And then I did it. And then I came home, and I felt so guilty that I lied to so many people. Because I saw it. I, I then saw myself in the box. I turned the dial on the thing on the cord, and I saw myself in the box talking, lying to myself. Oh, you know what, that, that, yeah, that happens. Hey, you know what, that is a good metaphor for my screening last night. Holy crap. It, it went, no, we learned things, and that's what's important. That's what's important, we learned things. We'll talk about that privately, Eloisa. We learned some things, it's good. Uh, so, okay, I was obsessed with television. I had just watched Clockwork Orange. I was a four-year-old child. I got to be on television. It was exciting. I then saw myself on television and I criticized myself because I wanted to be an honest person when I was a four-year-old child. For a person with no fixed identity, I really had a goal from, uh, from an early age, but when I was four, I was just like very attached to honesty. You know, Southern Baptists were telling me a lot of things about honesty. And I really, I was very firmly all for it. And I was dishonest to the public about being a crew member for Ch Captain Chesapeake. Even though I liked the man, I was not a crew member, and I told everybody I was, and I saw myself doing that on TV as a four-year-old child. And, and I took myself behind the shed. And I told myself, what? You know, like, why are you lying to people? on such a grand scale. Why do you need to do that? I still quite haven't quite found the answer to that question. I think that it might be 42.
drove for three days down on one street. Radio on, playing the big fleet. Invisible planes are cracking the concrete. That's just what some people say. Hey, hey. I laid down my blanket on cigarette butt beach. I saw the old man, he was doing okay. He's making his last stand on old bottles and cans. I see how terrified every single person is who I speak with on a daily basis since I was a child. You think you guys are scared? Holy crap. Every single person I approach is like, oh my god, what's going to happen to me? That's not an easy way to live. Borderline personality disorder is something people absolutely ignore in the media, in mental health circles, some therapists won't even take them on as patients because they're very difficult people. But I have a lot of people watching, I have a lot of support, and I'm on a mission. And I have a camera person now. Thanks to the Village Marketplace, thank you guys. I'm about to come and give you guys your donations from the live event. Uh, thank you for also letting me borrow one of your employees to be my camera person. I'm Joel Elliott. Follow me at Awkward Handle on Twitter. And Periscope. And Natter, but drop the E at the end because Natter's shorter. I've been neglecting that feed.